Last time we talk about Newton Jacobian, but we haven't go through the code yet. Okay. We will go through the code quickly and then we will talk about regression as much as we can do. Exam, we will do exam in room 212 on the date that uh, announced already with a blackboard. Okay, you should get the announcement and uh, it will be open internet. Okay, so when it's open internet, you can use internet as read only. Read only means you can go to internet, you just read it, right? You don't post any question, you don't email your friend to get your source code, okay? So, it's kind of open book, but this time you have many, many books. And you can bring as many books as you want. You can bring my homework that you did for me. You can bring my brother notebook. Uh, anything that you think you have, okay? Uh, it doesn't help if you don't know it, alright? So, I don't worry about it. Bring as much as you want. The exam is going to be uh, difficult enough so that we know if you know it or not. Um, so it's going to be based on just what you thought in the class? It's going to be whatever I announced. So it will be comprehensive. It will cover everything, most likely, will cover the things that we haven't put on the exam one. And whatever that you cannot do in that room, it's not going to be on the exam. If it's going to be on the, if it's on the exam, we may have to give you extra points because no one can do it because the computer in that room cannot do it. So your task, whenever you have time, go into that room, sit far apart from each other, and try. At least, can you run your homework in Jupyter Notebook over there? Can you run a Jupyter Notebook that is given over there in that lab? During the test, you're not allowed to use your own laptop. You have to use computer in that room. Okay? That room is connected to the internet. And we can track what you use on your browser. You cannot track on your computer. So there was a computer in that room. System of nonlinear equation. The code that we should go through is this. User Gaussian solve PP. Okay, this time with I think is with partial pivoting. Okay. So we have oh this 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 is the whole code. Gaussian elimination. Gaussian elimination with partial pivoting. Uh John, what do this code do for me? It do what? What's the purpose? To do the go to do the Gaussian elimination first. Does it calculate Jacobian for you? Yes or no? No, no. No. No, yet. No? Okay. Daniel, do you agree with him that this code doesn't calculate? Okay. Alright, it doesn't calculate any Jacobian for you. So when I put everything together, this line, Newton Jacobian, same as Newton method, I start with initial case. So initial case is x0. Okay. X0 is a list of the initial guess. Okay. So I say, okay, now I'm equal to 1. And matrix, oh, max iteration index of oh, equal to 100. Epsilon equal to 1, 10 to the power minus 8. X equal to x0 dot copy. So I just take the initial guess and store it. All right, Newton's Jacobian step. First step is, um, let's say train option equal to false, okay? We don't worry about this. So first step is we calculate Jacobian, okay? Jacobian, and then we start the value. Jack underscore NP equal to Jacobian. What is that line? Jacobian. I have written Jacobian function earlier, so this is Jacobian function, it takes the input. This is going to be dead. Oh, it's 11.05, so it's not dead yet. Okay. 
So today everyone can write. So just open function, take the input of <coughs> list of function and list of parts to calculate Jacobian. We want to calculate Jacobian at where or what is the independent variable. So this function itself calculate Jacobian. How do I calculate Jacobian? So Jacobian is oh where's the formula? Uh, I have x plus and x minus. Okay. So if I have partial derivative with respect to y, so I have f at x y, and I should have x at x and y plus epsilon. So if I have those two points, I can calculate forward scheme. If I want central scheme, I have f at x and y plus epsilon minus f at x and y minus epsilon divided by delta y. So this will be partial derivative of f with respect to y. Here's the equation. So basically this, this function is to calculate Jacobian. And I think we talked about it already. You see these two lines? That is for the reset. <coughs> Every loop, we want to reset. Reset means <coughs> If I have um, if I have x and y, so I want to calculate function value at x plus epsilon, but at original y. So I have x plus epsilon over here, right? Original y. So if you look at this, this x plus equal to x, this is just independent variable. Okay, I should write it down. Write it down. Okay, let me write it down this way. So I have x, x and y. So this is my matrix x. So this is what this line do for me. Copy everything. So x plus at location j equal to x plus at location j plus epsilon. So this means if j equal to 0, I just have this plus epsilon. But these things stay the same, right? Y stay the same. Because I plus epsilon just at location j, x plus at location j only, other location, I don't add plus epsilon. So at the end, my x plus will be x plus epsilon and y for j equal to zero. What about my x minus? x minus will be x minus epsilon and y stay the same. So this is my x minus, okay? So when I have function value at f i of function i at star x plus, what is star over there? Daniel? Star. What is star? Do we need it? Yeah, we need it, but I don't know why it works. How do you know that we need it? Because the code works, right? If you change a little bit of the code, it doesn't work. So star is unpacking. You remember variable unpacking? For keyword variable, you use star star. For list or tuple, you just use star. So this means my function take the input of two input. But list is just one input, so I unpack it. So that's how it becomes two input, right? So, so this means this is function f add x plus, I mean at x plus epsilon and at y. Y doesn't move. So fi at star x minus means at x minus epsilon and at y. Okay. So when this thing, uh, first term minus second term, you basically you have something like, you have 
So basically you have f at x plus epsilon but regular y minus f at x minus epsilon but at the regular y. And then you divide it by 2 epsilon like a slope, right? Did I divide it by 2 epsilon? So I divided by epsilon and multiplied by 0.5. Okay. Why do I have index i? Because I don't just have one function, I have several functions. Right? So when I go back to the next j, next j means the next column. If you recall, how, how's our Jacobian matrix? We have f1, f2, f3, right? And we have d by dx1, d by dx2, d by dx3, like row and column. So when you do a second column, or j equal to 2, so this time you have, you have to move this epsilon to y, right? You have to move this minus epsilon to y. So my x should be x and y plus epsilon. So x doesn't move, but y moves by epsilon. How do you do that? I reset again. I said, okay, x plus and x minus get to the original stage, which is x dot copy, right? So I reset. So it doesn't move. This is without moving. Then I say add location j, but this time j chain, j chain to one. So this means at f at x and y at plus epsilon. So I try to construct the Jacobian matrix, and this is how I do it. Okay, got it. Um, so for y, um, it's the same, uh, basically, the code for the x value, right? So how does it change it? Mm. x plus is a vector. It contains, for this case, maybe two member. It contains x and y. So when you want to do the operation on y, when you want to do partial derivative of f with respect to y, so this means is f at y only plus epsilon minus f at y only minus epsilon. x stay the same and divided by 2 epsilon. So how do we change from partial derivative with respect to x to partial derivative with respect to y? Is that your question? Yeah. Look at this line. That where this magic happened. Okay. We have a for loop. You don't have to write a for loop. You can write this thing twice. But okay, let's do the for loop. So when j equal to one, this means the first component in the matrix which is x. When j, uh, when j equals 0, that is x. When j equals 1, that is y. If you have two independent variables, right? So you just change one independent variable at a time. Okay, That's how you do f at x plus epsilon minus f at x minus epsilon divided by 2 epsilon. Mm, I think it may not be, I think it's clear enough, but not like crystal clear. For it to be very, very clear for you, you did it my code, and you write it again. And if you cannot do it, this means you didn't understand it completely. So, what if you don't understand it? You go back to my code and take a look what I did. Okay. Or you do this kind of thing in Excel. Excel plus VBA, maybe that's make you very, very really understand it. But you don't need it. You have my code already. Use it. So I have Jacobian calculation. Jacobian give, give me capital J. Capital J is matrix. Square matrix, right? <coughs> so let's give me... Oh, I didn't open it. Uh, Jacobian matrix. So basically, you are trying to do 
this, right? When you change column, you change from d by dx1 to be d by dx2, right? When you change row, you change from function 1 to function 2. We do this thing by this line of code, okay? That's Jacobian matrix calculation. Once we have Jacobian matrix calculation, I just write it like this. So that's just one line. Make it cleaner, right? So Newton Jacobian mean when you go inside the loop, step one, we calculate Jacobian matrix, right? And then we have a x equal to b. But this time, our A is Jacobian matrix. Do you remember the lecture? A x equal to B, this approach. J, A x equal to B. This time, our A is Jacobian matrix. Our A is delta x, our B is minus f. You still remember what is minus f? Okay. So, then we solve. Uh, that's the value of me. okay. Minus f is the right hand side. So minus f is a function value, right? It's a function value as the original location of x and y. So I just put that into NumPy array form. So I have minus f i star x for i in range of length f. And I make it to be column vector. That this line is just calculate column f vector column that contain minus f value. Okay, you get my point. Then, so that f evaluate at where? Is that evaluated at the current point or the next point? It should be evaluated at the current point, right? Current point, Newton Jacobian is we evaluate it at the current point. So where's that current point? You see, star x. Star x then we take the input from matrix x or list x. But I that x is list, so that's why I use star. You can rewrite everything like this by just use numpy array. Okay, so function f. This is a list comprehension, right? Function f take the input of x, which is current x. It's not next x yet. Where's the current x? Current x come from initial guest, right? From the initial guest, we evaluate the function value at that point. How many functions do we have? We have three functions. Just move this to the left hand side, right? Move this part to the left hand side and we have three functions. Okay? So this means we put the initial case of x1, x2, x3 and put it in these three variables. Then calculate f at line 1, f at line 2, and then f at line 3. You got me? That's f1, f2, f3. But make sure you put everything to one side. Okay? So that's the f value. So this is minus f. Minus f is the right hand side, right? We have j multiplied by delta x, which is unknown, equal to minus f, which is a column vector. j is square matrix. So we have system of linear equation, three equation, three unknown, and the coefficient are just constant. It's just a number, right? So three equations, three unknown, we can solve it using, I use Gaussian elimination that I wrote by myself. You can use psi pi, okay? You can use our beauty composition, but for this small, like just three by three, just do it on uh, Gaussian elimination, okay? You don't use like special things, because it's not that big, it's just three by three. You can actually do it by hand, but, okay? We just, Use Gaussian elimination. When we got use Gaussian elimination, we get delta x. Okay, from delta x, delta x 
is what? Mm. Is that like x o minus x nil or x nil minus x o or something? Don't recall that. So when you don't know that the x, you can calculate next x, right? So you move, you update x value to be the new x. So I do, okay, new x equal to xi plus delta x. This part on the back, this is just a list comprehension. If you do everything in NumPy array, maybe it's shorter. Okay, so this line is just move x from the current point to the next point. I use current point plus delta x. So then we move to the next point. Then we go back to this line. We calculate Jacobian again. After we calculate Jacobian, we specify what is the f value. f value, the right hand side of the equation, has to be evaluated at the current x value, right? So when you have j delta x equal to minus f, minus f defined at x current, j defined at x current. Jacobian matrix is kind of slow. We have to ask ourselves, slope at what location, right? We say, okay, slope at x, o, minus f at x, o. So this means in each loop, you have to recalculate j and minus f. So when we go back, we calculate new Jacobian matrix, new minus f, and we do Gaussian elimination again. Then we move to the next part. And we keep moving to the next point until we are happy about it. Happy about it means delta x approach zero. Okay, you see, if delta x, norm of delta x less than epsilon, then we break. So we are done. There are several ways to be happy about it. One way is to check if we make a progress or not, if delta x is moving or not. If it doesn't move, it stops, right? Do more calculation than do anything. When it stop, it doesn't mean that you get the correct answer. See my point? It just stop. Most of the time you get the correct answer, but sometimes you may not get the correct answer. So if you substitute the value that you get into the original equation, which is these three equations that we try to solve. And if left hand side equal to right hand side, then we are really, really happy about it. Okay? So that's the uh, Newton Jacobian calculation. Can you do it with NumPy without list? You probably can. Later on, homework. Do we ever have homework about that? Or maybe, maybe in the exam, you will have to give you the homework. So that's new done that could be. Please review it. There's no way for you to completely understand until you delete by code. And you can make it by yourself. This means that you understand the algorithm behind it. Once you understand the algorithm, it doesn't mean that you use that algorithm, okay? You use whatever is fast or whatever is suitable for your purpose. Okay? The good thing with understanding the algorithm is that when you see the complicated problem, you say, hey, we should solve by using this method, using that method. So this is, look at this. You have three equations, right? Right? Three equations. If it is four equations, four unknown, can you solve it? Can you? John, can you solve it? If it's four equations, four unknown? Four equation, four unknown. Yeah. If the solution exists, then we can solve it. If you have 20 equations, 20 unknown, can you solve it? Yes, you can. What about 100 equations, 100 unknown? Yes, you can, if the solution exists. But it's difficult for me to generate such kind of equation, okay? Let me tell you, to make sure that the solution exists. And most of the time, if you have 100 equations, 100 unknown, the solution may not be unique, okay? 
when you find some answer, does it mean that you get the same answer that I got? Maybe not. Does it mean that my answer is more correct than your answer? Not that either. You just have multiple solutions, right? So, do we need to really know the function? Do we? We need to know it to a certain extent. Let's say, if I don't know what is a function, but I give input number, and it can tell me the output. Is that enough? So, if we don't know what it is, but if you tell me x1, x2, x3, I tell you the function value. Is that enough? Daniel, that's not enough? No, it's not enough because like you said, the... We have to do Jacobian? <laughs> that is enough for the case where that function is differentiable. Think about it. When you actually do the Jacobian, do we need to know each of these? Like really, really know it? No. You see this line? Where do we use function? We use it over here. We use it to calculate Jacobian, right? When we calculate Jacobian, do we care about analytical solution of the slope? No, we don't. What do we care? We just care, hey, if I take, I don't even know what is f in here. I don't even care, right? So if I have the number of equations and number of unknown match, that's the point. So do I need to know what is f in here? No, I don't. What I need to know is if I put a vector, column vector of x, what is the output? If I change a little bit one component in the vector x, what is the output? If I change a little bit on second component, what is the output? Then I can calculate Jacobian, right? So I don't really need to know exactly what is f. So if I don't have the source code of f, it works as long as it's continuous, differentiable, and I give them vector that have x1, x2, x3, and it can give me the output, left-hand side minus right-hand side, right? Okay, here comes the black box. Black box means you don't know what it is, but when you put in the unknown, x1, x2, x3, it gives you the output, okay? For example, if we have matrix, you still remember um, this? One, two, three, four. So it gives me 7, 10, 15, 20 seconds. Here is the input, here is the output. Believe it or not, what you just have learned, Newton Jacobian, can be used to solve where we don't know what is the input, but we know, we don't know this. We can start from initial case of 1, 1, 1, 1, and reach 1, 2, 3, 4 as a solution. But you have to think about it as a black box, as an input and the output. Function value. So we need to have number of equation match to the number of unknown. If it doesn't match, it doesn't work. So look at this. I have four unknown and I have four output. Perfect. It's very good. I don't need to know what operation it do inside. Like for this time, the operation that it did inside is square, right? Let's say I don't care or I don't know about that. So I have four input. I have four output. This is good. Second step is to define what is my f1. I need four f, right? F1, f2, f3, f4. What is my f1? My f1. 2, 3, 4 has to be for the case where if I input the right x, then the output has to be 0. Okay? 
So I may say, hey, my x1 is mm, whatever output over there minus the desired output over there. That's my x1. Huh? And my x2, whatever, oh, let me zoom in. I think it's not that clear. Is it bigger? You can see it now? So my x1 is, I mean, I'm sorry, f1, function 1 is, whatever output from the black box minus this side output on the first location. f2 will be whatever output from that location minus the this output. f3 will be that minus that. And f4 will be that minus that. So I have function f1, f2, f3, f4. I don't know what it is, but I know if I have, okay. Oh. x1, x2, x3, x4. So I have, if I have one, two, three, four. My output will be 7, 10, 15, 22, and my f1, f2, f3 will be all zero. So I have my f1, f2, f3, f4. Don't, don't worry about these two, okay? These two is just, uh, just what worry about this phone number. That's my input, and that's my output. Newton Jacobian, whenever you have four input and four output, if you get the right set of x, it should give you a f, every f to be zero simultaneously. That can be solved by Newton Jacobian. So I have x1, x2, x3, x4, and I have function output f1, f2, f3, f4. Done. What's the calculation step? So this is where we don't know what is f. But when we give input, it gives us output, right? Initially, we start with our initial guess. One, 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 one. Right? That's the initial guess. From the initial guess, what do you do? You calculate Jacobian matrix, right? What's Jacobian matrix? Let's take a look briefly. Df1 by Dx1. How do you calculate Df1 by Dx1? You change x1 only a little bit. So a little bit means maybe plus plus 001 and others stay the same. So this one will be x1 plus dx, or maybe epsilon, right? That's x1 plus epsilon. Then I calculate f value at that x. So, I calculate f value at that x, so I get f1, f2, f3, f4 at that point equal to that value. How do I get the partial derivative of just f1? So I, I want to do this thing, right? I want to do df1, f1 alone. So what is df1? I just use that. So that minus that divided by epsilon. That's my Jacobian. I mean top left Jacobian. One one coming up Jacobian. I can do Jacobian of one. Can I do Jacobian of everyone? Yes. If you want d by dx2, you make this the same and you plus epsilon on x2. Right? So once you calculate all of them, you get Jacobian matrix. You get minus f, right? Then you can do Gaussian elimination. Right? Then you can calculate delta x. Once you calculate delta x, you update the x. So instead of 1, 1, 1, 1, it will be x new. And you keep doing that. Then you reach your solution. 
So, even though we don't know what it is, but we have it. It's a black box. We don't understand whatever, we don't care. But our method can use to solve it. Yes. Okay? But for the case where we have black box, whatever inside may have multiple solutions. Is it right? And whatever you get, maybe one of the correct answer. If you want to get other answer, how do you do it? Nonchalantly. You get one of the output. If you want to know other solution, what do you do? So if you have parabola equation, it may cross x axis at two point. Using Newton Jacobian mean similar to Newton method, right? So if you start with one initial condition, you get one answer. If you want another answer, what do you do? Start with the different initial condition. So instead of one minus one, you may start with one minus one, one minus one. Or maybe you may maybe ten ten minus ten minus ten. Start with different set of initial condition give you other answer if other answer exist. It may give you error. Some initial point lead to divided by zero, lead to infinity or something. So you don't care. So you start with many many initial cases. Eventually, you get your answer, right? So for the case of black box, it works. Don't tell me that it doesn't work. So this means, if you want to know what will make this to be 10, 20, 30, 40, you use Newton Jacobian method. It can tell me what is this for initial case, right? We will have three by three matrix. It can solve, right? You can solve, not it can solve. You can do it. Do you think you can do it? When I toss C plus plus, I just have x one, x two, x three, x four. But maybe this time we have need we may need like fourteen by uh, I mean four by four matrix. X one, two, three, four until x sixteen, and the answer matrix will be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, or something. Then you solve for me and you tell me, hey, using Newton Jacobin, what is the initial case that made it square equal to that? Right? You can do it. And you can check the answer. You have a couple of ways of checking the answer. You put your answer into the initial case and check function value if it's equal to zero or not. Or quickly you can use like what you did in the homework. Solver in Excel. Done. Right, quick. Right. Mm, with a little bit more practice, it will be crystal clear for you. Uh, let's do regression. <laughs>